Hello, interwebs. I hope you're all doing well. And I am really excited because I have a very special guest who I've been trying to uh, schedule for a very long time, but we keep have miss keep missing each other in the night. Uh, but I'm really excited to introduce Chris Westlake, who is the composer for my favorite show, Star Trek Lower Decks, uh, as well as another show that I really, really love, Solar Opposites as well. Um, so I'm just excited to have you on, Chris, because we finally get a chance to talk. I know this is a long time in the making and yeah. uh, I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, um, I know we, we like had a plan to like talk, I think, after season three. And then just because we both got busy with random stuff and other things, it was always just like, we'll get to it when we get to it. So I'm glad that we actually did. This is great. No, no yeah. it's great to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So the, like what I kind of want to have this conversation about, I mean, obviously we'll get to the Star Trek of it all because, of course, we'll get to the Star Trek of it all. But I, I want more wanted to like talk uh, to you about your career and what you've done and who you are and how you think about music. So very late, like light subjects to, to get into. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I guess like the best place to start is just introduce yourself to the audience, like where you're from, you know, and, and how you got into music. Yeah. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm from <laughs> San Diego, topics. so that's an easy one. Yeah. Um, so we can start there. And then I think how I got into music, um, I've always been a fan of music. I remember being a little kid. In fact, I, was, I just was reminded of this memory because um, I found my old, this is dating myself, but I found like an old box. I'm like doing some fog cleaning or whatever. And I found an old box of uh, uh, VHS tapes. Yep. And, yep. Yep. Um, and so I, I've been like transferring because I want to know what's on them. They're not labeled, of yeah. course. So, uh, you know, what did I record? What was I interested in? Some of them were from like we got our VCR when I was like maybe five years old or something like that. Mm -hmm. so it's like you know old cartoons that I was recording off of, and like you know I remember I recorded over my sister's West Side Story, <laughs> yeah, uh, which got very mad at and so well, all I've, these memories I had the same thing back. with my brother and sister were recording over stuff of vhs tapes and it's like well that 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 can hurt <laughs> yeah, what did you record over what did you replace i uh, actually so i actually recorded over a little bit of my parents uh wedding <laughs> oh, oh that's a tough one uh, so that one there was that one and then i think with my sister she had like some what was it i think i recorded some like quantum leap over some like disney thing that she had like disney channel thing that she was very upset mm -hmm. about so yeah it was a uh, fun fun times <laughs> anyways yeah. i cut you up no 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 no. mine is that you know it's funny you get the uh you get the whistling mm -hmm. and you, get, you get the you know woo, woo, and mm -hmm. then it, and then it's uh you get the scraggly lines and then it cuts over to um <laughs> uh, back to the future too behind the scenes Perfect, footage yeah. of, like the hoverboard and stuff you know which is just like where i was at at the time Gosh, um, yeah. but I was reminded of all these memories I had growing up with music. I had like a little Casio keyboard, um, and it had, um, uh, uh, uh you are the sunshine of my life, I think programmed into it. And nice. it was something that I would just like habitually go over and mess with and play around with all super informal. I didn't start playing music until I was 12 or 13, but I think, uh, going back like even earlier, I remember I used to have this game where I would try and play, I would try and simultaneously remember, like Superman and Star Wars. And I yeah. know what Williams was, but for some reason I was like already sort of making, I think a little bit of a, an association there. And there were of course, like some of my favorite films. And um, in fact, I found the original uh, uh, VHS tape that I recorded Star Wars off of the TV, which is how oh. I first saw it for the first time. Nice. Um, so that was super fun. And, um, but I, I, I could only remember one, theme at a time it was like if i could remember the th the superman theme i couldn't quite remember how star wars went and if i had star wars in my head i would be like oh switch back to superman and i couldn't do it mm. and then um uh, uh so i think i was a little bit musically aware but my my dad was a guitar player and so he played um in a bunch of bands i remember you know of course like you know dad telling you stories of his youth Mm. That kind of thing and he, Back when i was in the band you know yeah, yeah. yeah those sort of things yeah uh but he actually had some cool ones where he was like oh yeah we uh opened up for um uh the beach boys and blood sweat and tears and i was like oh, oh shit okay <laughs> that, that is and, actually really cool yeah and uh, like, especially the older i get where i was like oh that was actually quite cool because like mm. the, the way it used to work in those days was that they would play like big bands or up-and-coming bands would play high school dances to like mm. push the uh, sales of the album in this town that they would travel through yeah. So they would play like high school dances and then everybody in the high school would go out and buy the album um, the next day. Um, Smart marketing. Rah, rah, physical media. Yeah. Uh, and um, 
uh, uh, so he got, you know, the high school bands of those days got an opportunity to like play with like bigger acts and stuff. So mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool. Um, but he was always playing guitar when I was a kid. And then finally, I think when I was like 11 or 12 years old, maybe I was even 13, you know, I just sort of made him show me something Yeah. Um, for the first time. And I played, I think it was Wipeout on guitar. Interesting. Um, so that was my first sort of, uh, um, uh, uh, playing music was, was just asking my, my dad informally, not knowing that it was going to send me down this whole trajectory. I very quickly got obsessed and um was really into like uh um got quickly into like you know electric guitar uh nirvana mm-hmm. uh, uh, it smells like teen spirit had just come out mm-hmm. and um so it was like metallica the black album and so I'm, I'm metallica totally was my well. first ever concert that i went to so just i'm um, having weird like 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 um mine too yeah yes. weird. oh uh, yeah i was at the death mag their death magnetic thing was the one that i went to which was uh, uh, gnr and, and metallica double bell that was oh that's fun <laughs> yeah um and uh uh yeah so it was, it was it was sort of like you know uh um metal and i and then i got really into uh um uh, uh a band called uh, Pantera and then very quickly I got into like post-punk type stuff so like uh it's a band called Rites of Spring there's a label called Sub Pop um from DC yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, out of yep yeah. and uh obviously Sub Pop is huge now in fact I think I just saw um I'm seeing like you know now the t-shirts are everywhere yeah. but back in the day it was uh um you know not as not as well known um who else like Fugazi I was into all this like random stuff and then I saw a classical guitar player uh, play a piece, um, uh, uh, just a, a piece of from the classical repertoire, and it was this thing called uh, Recordos de Alhambra, and then it like completely set off my again, like uh, I'm just doing this now. So yeah. I swapped out my electric for um, an acoustic, like nylon string guitar, and then um, and I just played a lot of classical guitar, Spanish guitar, flamenco a little bit, and um, and then went to school to study that. It was like a performance major. Where'd you and, go, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, no, please. I was just saying, where, where'd you go, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, uh, uh, so I went to USC. Okay, gotcha, um, gotcha. They had a, uh, um, a guitar program there where um, I studied with a, a family of classical guitarists called the uh, Los Romeros. They're oh. like a Spanish family um, uh, uh, of uh, long history performers. Um, mm. You know, it's like, I think going on like three, maybe even four generations now. Damn. Um, and, uh, so the, uh, uh, Pepe Romero used to run the guitar department at USC. And so anyways, I ended up going to USC and studying music. USC of course is a big film school. Yeah. I was wondering when that was going to circle back. Cause I, I found it interesting that you like started getting into music through film, but then sort of moved away from it. So I was curious where it came full circle back to, to doing like TV and movie stuff. Yes, I know. I know. I took the long way around. It was yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, no, it's just it's it's just how it's it's the interesting way of like how our life stories sort of get told about like these little interests that we have then become more important later on. Anyways, yeah, it's just yeah. I think well, I think the the interesting thing about that is that I just never had any idea. I never had any goal necessarily. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't there was it was very much just I I'm doing this now. I love this new thing. Yeah. You know, whether it was like electric guitar and then classical, then flamenco. Um, and then in school, I was obviously a big film nerd and uh, love movies was always like, you know, trying to find people to go see the new, you know, Coen Brothers movie or, or mm-hmm. you know, like I was aware of filmmakers. And uh, so uh, just as like happenstance, the people I became friends with um, were uh, film students. Mm hmm. Cause they were the, they were the people who were always down to go see a movie. And so, um, and then eventually, you know, we just became friends. And then one of them asked me like, Hey, I need music for my short film. Uh, you film do student. I have done that because I, I went to Ithaca college and I went, there's a film uh, school there, but there's also, uh, I think it started as a music school originally. So there's a good music school there as well. There and is. So there, yeah, Ithaca, yeah. 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 So Absolutely. it would, it would, uh, that would also be the case. Like I had music friends that we would like go see movies together. And then eventually it's always just sort of like, Hey, uh, do you want to make music for my thing? <laughs> it's yeah, just it's how like it this, goes. Uh, kind of like Brad thing. So like, hey, so you're yeah. going to do the music for my short yeah, film, Yeah, exactly. Right? It's like, yeah, it's just, I need that. So you're doing it just so you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and for me, I actually said no at first because I was like, oh, I don't write music. I just play it. Like gotcha. the idea of writing music was, I thought, I thought really scary. Mm. Um, and um, 
you know, also because you, as a classical musician, you're playing these pieces that have been sort of like curated over hundreds of years, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, and, and you're getting the talent pool, not just from everyone who's alive, but from everyone who's ever lived. And like, yeah, and like the the very like big selection of like these these are the venerated artists of our time, yes. as opposed to like you're not getting like the second rate dude who's like just trying to sell his like stuff like on the street, you know, back then. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if there was street musician like art like buy my sheet music uh, back in that time. <laughs> Anyways. I mean, it was similar. They would sell like I was uh, uh, doing uh, small gigs at the time. I was like yeah. playing guitar at like hotels and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and then the um, yeah, I, I had friends. My friends who were also like other guitarists, uh, mm-hmm. very niche, small community. But you yeah. know, they would make a CD and then sell their CD at the yeah. you know, play at the mall, all that kind of thing. That's how um, everyone, a lot of people start. And so yeah, yeah, yeah totally. I was uh, I was right there doing weddings and the and the whole bit. Um, I, my favorite gig was I would do the um, uh, at the Richard Bernardo Inn. I would do their little tea time thing, and it was like perfect. It was like a, such a great high school job. Yeah, um, oh, that's fun. But, uh, but I I yeah I was afraid of writing music. Um, and and so it took some convincing. And then what did it again was like a little interest in synthesizers. So I was like. You know, in a music the nerdiest, store, the nerdiest instrument of them all. Yeah, oh, the best. I, yep, I just love it. love it. Yeah, exactly. As far as your imagination can go, that's that's what they that's what they're there for. And um, and I was like, oh, this is just so wild and new. And uh, and it was just playing around with it, and then was having fun. And so um, I was like, you know, I have a. That was the other thing too. Is like, oh, do you want me to score your short film with classical guitar? Like, mm-hmm. is, is that the score you really want? <laughs> so then all of a sudden, with the the synthesizer, um, and I I saved up and and bought one. Uh, I think it was a Roland XP30. Um, and I was uh, uh, sort of all of a sudden had some tools, and I had a cassette tape recorder i think it was called the task cam port of three. Oh, fun so i don't know the age of your audience but if they're <laughs> i mean i don't uh, know if that that task cam definitely sounds familiar to me as a film student like i had a bunch of task cam oh, yeah. stuff but i don't know if i remember that specific piece of equipment it was but. like the thing they would sell in like you know um guitar player magazine would always have like a full page ad for it mm. uh because it was a four track cassette recorder so you could layer so i bought it when i was a kid or a teenager um and it was the cheapest thing on the market and Mm -hmm. and basically you could lay down like a rhythm track and then um and then a lead guitar track which was the most important thing yeah yeah, of course yeah Yeah. as we all know (laughs) yeah um and uh yeah so that was that was sort of like the beginnings um and then i did a short film and and uh it was actually the the exact opposite of my fears as our fears are so often you know Mm -hmm. like i feel like um prohibitive and and wrong yeah, um, you know, usually huh. the biggest thing that you're afraid of doing is the thing that you probably most need to do because it's yeah. you're you're well aware of what your shortcomings are, which is probably why you fear doing it because you know what like you're not you have enough information to know what you're not good at yet, and the only way to get over that is by doing it. So it's so true. It's so true, and it's um, because you care too as well. And I mean, good on friends for pushing us out of our comfort zones, huh? Mm-hmm. I mean, just like, like you said, like, oh yeah, you're going to do this. I was sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, strongly convinced, I think over time in a way that only, you know, a slightly annoying friend who won't let something go can be. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it was great. And I just had like, it was, it was the ac- exact opposite problem that I was worried about, which is I was worried about, um, you know, with a, a film it's like, oh, well, can I come up with anything? And it was sort of the opposite of like, oh, that's interesting. If you play mm-hmm. it like this, it kind of feels a little lighter. If you play it like this, there's like, oh, all of a sudden there's this sort of, uh, um, are they arguing? I don't know. There's all this yeah. sort of context that you that music provides. And, and that sort of awakened my eyes to, I think I'd always wanted to be a storyteller or yeah. always enjoyed stories. And so I started to see the opportunities of of music and storytelling, and then that from that point on, I was like, oh, it's definitely, um, it's definitely this again. One of those things where it's like kind of like you're floating out in space, and then something hits you, and and you just have no choice in the matter. Now you're sort of going off. Yeah, I just have to go in that direction. It's just yeah. the thing. It's the advice that I give to people a lot too, or there's like, what should I do to get into like YouTube or filmmaking or writing? Like any of these things, like just start doing it because that's how you figure out a what works and b what your voice is within that. Cause it's like, I made a bunch of crap and arguably sometimes people say I still make crap, but like, I'm only able to figure out what I'm better at and what I'm interested in particularly and just sort of like seeing what works by playing around with stuff. 
So like, yeah. you know, you know, I made a film recently. And so like the things for yes. me is like, I'm learning like the stuff that I'm watching in like the edits and that are coming through. is like, oh, I could have done this better. But it's like, I only know, like now I know to do that for the next stuff. And hopefully the thing I made is good, but it's, you get better by making the thing and doing the thing. Um, so yeah, it just it works in all artistic mediums. And, and, I'm, and I'm curious for you too, the question I wanted to toss to you is like, um, what was it like doing music that was part of like a larger narrative like what did, what did it do for you to like be like oh i have to find music that fits the story being told versus like oh i have to create music that sort of like can be anything based off of like I, my own impetus you know i'm curious what the distinction would be and what that felt like uh it completely freeing yeah um yeah it was the exact opposite of like give me a box and then i feel free it's kind yeah. of like um a little bit of constriction i think and especially in creative things is like mm -hmm. probably one of the best things you can do Agreed. yeah um it is because i the reason probably why i didn't write music and why i still haven't written a lot of concert music is is it's sort of like the questions are so big of like well what do you want it to sound like it's like anything you want mm -hmm. you know? and then it's like well how long should it be however long and you want Mm -hmm. You know, like it's sort of, you know, it could be two minutes, could be two hours, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. that is sort of um, paralyzing for me, uh, I think, as a creative person. I think um, all of a sudden I'm watching something and I'm able to immediately respond to it yeah. and, and hopefully, you know, relate to it in some way. And then, oh, I know what to do. The music needs to feel like this. It needs to, uh, uh, you know, and it needs to start here and it's going to stop there. But we're going to change it at this part in the middle when this door closes to kind of like give a little bit of a bridge into the next scene. Yeah. And all of a sudden, all of my answers are 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 there and then I can hit the ground running. Yeah. Uh, and th that's very freeing to me. I actually really, and, and same thing with collaboration too. I, I, I find that like, as frustrating as it is to like get a note, you know, like mm -hmm. nobody likes getting notes, but I, I have to say that oftentimes, almost every single time I get a note, you know, and, and I, and you work through it and you sort of do it again, you come to a better understanding of the thing that you're making. And yeah. there's never been a, a point at which I've thought like, Oh, I wish it could have been the way it was originally. It's, um, it's the same thing I learned too. on, on doing my stuff is just like, how it does sort of become collaborative in terms of like everyone working towards the same goal you know people tend to venerate like the individuals behind certain things it's like no what a good work of art when it is a collaborative piece of art is is when like someone does set like this is what this piece is about like we're making this you know episode of a show or this movie about this topic but then everyone else sort of like as their own artistry funneled through that theme or idea or concept and then sort of like jumping off of it like together as opposed to like venerating the like one person behind all of it like that's that's the fun of it yeah i just i, I couldn't agree more with that that's like so exactly you just described exactly what i um why i think i do what i do yeah it's it's so <laughs> um it's so great to hear it so concisely <laughs> uh um conjure that but no i think you know the the analogy that i always make is like it's nice to I, it's the same thing i don't like the i've never been the person of like oh i just want my music to spring forth from my forehead i am the anointed mm -hmm. one that kind of thing or whatever i am you know it's so uh like i said freeing um and, and i think liberating to to work with other people and to see other people's contributions and see how like they've headed out of the park and then now it's your turn there's something about that that sort of camaraderie and, and, um, you know, the analogy that I sometimes use is like, it's like, um, the, having a, a baby, you know, that like you, the baby is the, the, the movie or the film or the, uh, the episode or the story mm -hmm. and, and everybody is just trying to take care of this other thing. And it's not about yourself. It's, it's yeah. not about your contribution. It's about like what this almost like living, breathing creature sort of needs, uh, to be their best. And yeah. And that's the way that I, I really like to look at it. And and when you get that way, when you get into um, sort of, you know, even if you get into disagreements with people, it's always coming from a place of like wanting to make sure that the, the, the thing is good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that it's as good as it can be and not about, you know, my contribution to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I find well. the death of many projects is like ego, like people care oh about it's like my yeah. idea has to win as opposed to like, what's the best idea for the project? Yeah. And sometimes, again, you get, sometimes you get pushback or, or some, you know, either you, you are able to convince somebody of something, 
you know, or you, which is much more often the case, you kind of do, you do what they, what they want. And, and what I often find is, is uh, a renewed sense of trust in, in um, somebody else's ability to sort of know their story. I mean, so often mm -hmm. as a composer, I'm kind of coming in very late in the process. Somebody's lived with something for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. Like M Mike McMahon, for example, has been talking about lower decks for Gosh, I mean, seven, decade, yeah, <laughs> like maybe long, maybe eight, or yeah. maybe even a little bit. I mean, if you count when, when was when did you do TNG season eight? I'd have to look because that that theoretically so, was like the the pieces of Lower Decks. I would assume, yeah, those are the beginnings of it. And I remember mm -hmm. when he created that, and he was just you know amused by it. It was just yeah. sort of like something. Oh yeah, I just made up this uh, Twitter account TNG S eight, and uh, um, and, and it was just a funny. Thing that was just this really delightful unexpected um thing and then he did the book after that and i remember he was writing the book and all the the he would go back through the archives and just find these gems um of uh you know um uh, of jordy being a hand model or something like that <laughs> and like, you know it's just great uh uh these great uh, uh little uh pieces of of, of sort of trek history mm -hmm. and um uh, uh and then yeah and then going into lower decks um that's the that was the the sort of genesis of it getting to see it sort of slowly build i mean but that's the thing is that these you know creators they work with stuff for years and years i'm sure you and on your film mm -hmm. you know you've you've wanted to do uh, uh, um that for you've been bouncing around those ideas for a long time yeah and i think it's just trusting somebody that has lived with it longer than you um to sort of uh, uh uh you know be your guide and you know uh and in that way it's a good you know it's a good i i you know it's a good give and take of well that's the thing too for me is just like listening like i've been thinking about for my film sorry to talk about my film when I'm no please just, i want to hear it. i can't wait to see it by the way oh I'm, I'm i'm excited for you to see it um yeah but um just to keep it on topic here i'll rant about my stuff all day on my own channel but um but to talk about you, like with me, it's it's interesting to like bring on other people. And like I'm talking with my own composer and we're like bouncing around ideas. And it's so cool to see her sort of like come up with ideas that like I never would have thought of that are based on this sort of theme. And it's that's that's what I love about it being like, you know, bringing someone in even later in the game and being like, well, what what is what is the thing that I made? Uh, so far, along with all these other people, say to you, and then what do you want to like add or contribute or or, or, or use to buttress up that? Uh, that I think is like really really cool, and I think a lot of fun. So I think that that's like the best collaboration. It just sounds like that that's like from your side of things too. It's it sounds like what you aim to do as well. Yeah, I I, I think it's the same. You know, the the other thing that has been great is that getting to work on um some you know bigger projects over the years and and working on some of those first short films that mm -hmm. you know I worked on it, it when I was in college, the process isn't that different. Yeah. Um, some of the you know the the sort of um, uh, um the infrastructure around it, of course, is built up, and you know we're extremely lucky on on Lower Decks that we get to go into this amazing recording studio and record like a full studio size orchestra, which is amazing. Is that where you are right now? Because you look in a very is this your home or is this a no? This is my yeah no no this is my um uh, we're just in my apartment. I have oh a, damn it's a fancy setup. I thought you were in like somewhere you. fancy fancy. Uh... No no I, I, I should just lie and say that yeah it's like yeah this is the I'm in the middle of uh, doing <laughs> so much stuff. I'm doing this for you. Uh, by yeah. the way, the orchestra is like right over there, just waiting. <laughs> yeah, uh, wouldn't that be the coolest? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Um, but no this is where I spend most of my time. I'm gotcha. um, in here almost every day. But but anyways, yeah, going back to like getting to work on cool spots with uh with yeah it's yeah. it's such a similar process it's like really the creative process does not change the mm -hmm. some of the pieces around it and the people that you're working with you know have more departments um and more specificity maybe within some of those things mm -hmm. so you've got um you've just got more um uh, uh sort of tools at your disposal but the fundamental creative process is unchanged virtually from being a student um so I'm, I, I'm that was a surprising thing for me a little I, I, bit. Oh, sorry, keep cutting you off. Apologies. No, 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 no please. I'm curious too, like, because we were talking when we like were in, met in person a few days ago. Um, like you're talking about like doing like working with an orchestra and stuff like that. And one of the again, I keep relating it to my own experience, but it's just I'm curious to talk to you about it. It's just like one of the weirdest experiences for me on my own film was like I work in YouTube land, where like I work with a couple people here and there, but then there was a moment where uh, I got went into a meeting. 
And when there was these all these people that we had like hired in this meeting and I'm like, oh, all these people are here to like do this thing together. And and it's sort of my job to try and uplift them as artists, um, like to try and like my job as directors to like be like, oh, let me try and make sure that they get a voice in it, too, um, and and facilitate that in the best way that I can. Um, and I'm curious for you being someone who like did start off like, you know, as many of us do, like just like working by yourself, making things on like part of a larger project to now having an orchestra that you work with, with like a bunch of musicians. Like, what is that like being like working with other people who are there to facilitate what you're doing, which is also part of a larger thing as well? I'm, I'm sort of curious your experience with that. Yeah, it's um, it's funny because I, I almost every time I was writing, especially orchestral music, um, uh, uh, when I was a student, you know, I would try and get a small group of people together to even just play as many parts as we possibly could. So mm -hmm. that if there were, you know, maybe I had one French horn and one flute and like, you know, seven string players and then <laughs> yeah. trying, to, trying to put them in the places where they're going to make the most difference. And, um, and, and, and sometimes just writing for only the instruments that I, that I had mm -hmm. um, available to me. Um, but it's, it's a totally, um, a uh, different thing. I mean, somebody comes in and just gives it this life and and new breath, and it's um, especially with with our our orchestra on lower decks is that it it very quickly gets to be um, like where they just play it perfectly, like kind of on the first or second time. Mm -hmm. So then you just get this wonderful like opportunity to uh, um, like you said, uh, uh, like I I'm uh, inviting other things I'm, I'm sort of like you know when i'm sort of on the podium and i do conduct and 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 one of my but one of my favorite things about being the conductor is is sometimes being able to ask somebody for their opinion especially a solo yeah or something because i remember what it was like to be a um a performer and and i know that that in some ways they're going to be their own worst critic Mm -hmm. and so i always i one of the things i love doing is just sort of throwing out of like you know well how would you if we took off all of these performance indications, how would you want to play this? You know, mm -hmm. and and then sort of getting that, so it becomes like even uh, um, a better. You, you're we want to invite people's own ability to express themselves. Yeah, um, to the point where I'll sometimes even have solos come into the booth, which um, is something that I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it happens, but like it's definitely not common um mostly because i i want to uh make sure that the that the musicians are happy with their performance as well yeah. um and uh, uh again part of it is like i know that they're going to be self-critical so they might hear some things that i um uh, uh that i don't and and it's it's that um you know sort of like give and take um that is just like i think one of my favorite parts um about the process um, no it's it's so wild it, i'm just because like Sorry, I keep relating to my stuff, but it's like as a director, yeah, it's just the same thing with act, like working with actors and being like, you know, I, I did a lot of acting stuff when I was in film school to learn how to better work with actors. And it's always just interesting to be like, well, remove my notes that I put in the script uh, of like, you know, this is like I said, this line is sarcastic or I put a period here. There's like in the in the film that I'm doing, there's like a line that uh, actor was just playing it and they added a question mark rather than making it a statement like I had. And it was just like completely changed the scene in a way that was like so cool. And I'm like, that's like, it's just interesting to be like, yes, like ignore, ignore, ignore the things that I wrote in terms of like, like how would you want to to play it based on like the the music of what I put in there, I guess is a sort of metaphor, I guess I'm going for. It's just really interesting that it's just it, the same dynamic. Know, what What that does is that it just creates this wonderful sense of play yeah yeah and and it's uh, uh because some you know i was uh, um lucky that i got to see a couple of really wonderful composers uh when i was younger and who served mm -hmm. as a sort of uh, um so uh, uh, sort of like a good mentor uh, one of them was uh, alan silvestri who's an mm -hmm. incredible composer back to the future predator um yeah. and of course endgame um and uh and i got to see him work with the musicians and they were friends um really and it cool. was i think that was a really great thing and i've seen sessions over the years there was another one um person i got to work with uh, thomas newman um and uh he was incredible as well he has done everything from gosh uh, uh shawshank redemption to 
um, Finding Nemo. Mm-hmm. Um, and, didn't, he, uh, didn't he also do? Was that him who did? No, was it? Maybe I'm thinking of someone else. A series of unfortunate events. Was that was that Thomas Newman? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The theatrical. Let me. Yeah. The theatrical one because I I always have the end credits song of that movie in my head. The do 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 do. Like I always have that stuck in my head. I love that end credits music. Anyways, so incredible no i mean listen go you know like (laughs) yeah he's great it's fantastic that movie i have ups and downs of that movie but the music in it was phenomenal so yes i always always he's he's just an incredible composer and and watching him work with the orchestra too is not an authoritarian you know Mm -hmm. um humble um and 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 cordial and respectful of of the musicians and and what they bring to the table and so i was you know just very lucky that was and then of course i I got to um work we haven't chatted about this yet but i got to work on on force awakens oh yeah yeah yeah. i remember you mentioned Um, and um and got to to watch got to go to um, a number of recording sessions watching john williams conduct his incredible sport for that movie but it was formative. I mean, getting the opportunity to watch these people who, I mean, and John, in, in the case of John Williams, you know, he's pretty much the best that's ever been. Mm. And um, certainly the best that's alive right now. Mm. And I just feel very lucky to have seen that and, and just sort of want to carry that on in my own, um, in my own small way um, yeah. of, uh, uh, you know, because I have been to ses- sessions where it's, it's a different tone. It's sort of like more, you know, the 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 image of like the classical, the conductor is sort of a, um, you know, a, a sort of a, a workhorse type thing. Yeah. Um, or and and I think that that was much more common, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, decades ago. Um, but there is to... sort of like you know, stodgy sort of classical kind of component to things sometimes, mm. and I just. Ugh, I just don't yeah, want to. You know, yeah, like that like point of it is to have me. art. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then you you are you're inviting a sense and a spirit of play, and it always pays off. It yeah. always makes the music sound better. And I'm always um, uh, when I get to listen to it again, I'm always delighted by the the things that I'm hearing that the musicians are are adding. Yeah. Um, oh, and uh, um, yeah, so it's just yeah, I, I, I that's the only way to be for me is is. Yeah. Uh, and, and then people like to work with you too. You know, that's the other benefit. Yeah. Yeah. So don't be an asshole. And maybe people yeah. don't want to do stuff. Yeah. I mean, what yeah. are we doing? If yeah. we, I always say like, you know, if we, the whole point is that we get to cheat, right. Is mm-hmm. that we get to make a living doing something that we love. Yeah. So why turn it into work? Like, exactly. Like, why yeah. would we want to do that? But you can just go, if you want to be, you know, miserable and, and uh, um, be looking at the clock, you know, there's lots of, there's lots of ways that Places you could do, do that. that. Yeah. For more money. <laughs> maybe Need much more money. <laughs> But uh, but that's the whole thing is that, you know, yeah, we get to, you know, ha- have fun doing uh, making something. And then and then what's even better is that when people appreciate it, too, it's like it's such a, a rewarding feeling. Yeah. Uh, let me uh, sort of jump into some stuff with some specificity, because we haven't talked about Star Trek and I'm sure some of my audience yes. will yell at me about it. So so what is it like? Uh, well, first off, I like how did you meet Mike? Because I know you knew him before all of this. And then how did yes. you get on Star Trek Lower Decks and, and and then sort of that whole process? Gosh, so for for people who don't know, Mike and I are, are um, he's one of my best friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I've known him for it's coming up on, I think, gosh, like 18 years now. Damn. Like OK, that. wow. But we to date our friendship, I can date it exactly because uh, we met at a um, at um, a showing of Constantine. <laughs> Um, <laughs> amazing okay yeah. i love that underrated so, movie too by the under, way yeah, yeah. uh so it, it was a friend of mine from usc um uh my friend tyler and then he was friends with another person named cesare uh who was mike's best friend growing up and um and then the uh the four of us just got together and you know my buddy was like hey do you want to go see this movie and i was like sure so i went out and um uh, and then we ended up like going to in and out afterwards and we shut in and out down, which one is that uh, that's never happened since, mm-hmm. uh, nice. and, uh, you know, I don't think any in and out closes anymore. Right. <laughs> I know, okay. um, and uh, so we were there till like two o'clock in the morning yeah. on, on at, at sunset in orange. Yeah. Just like, I've never laughed so hard in my entire life. And uh, I love those uh, moments. immediately yeah. knew that like, you know, Mike was a special person. Yeah. Um, and um yeah. And so we, uh, he was still living in Chicago at the time and, and, um, he went back, I think, and, and then moved out to LA and we met at a party, um, and, um, afterwards and then started hanging out 
like almost an unhealthy amount, you know, like it was just like, we were just there playing video games until God knows what hour playing a lot of uh, Guitar Hero. There was a lot of Zelda. There was a lot of um, Mario Kart. And yeah, fun um, times. Yeah, which was, the, you know, and then there was a lot of movie watching. And um, and one of the best parts about that now that we're working together is that we just have this history of like watching movies together and so and having you know a lot of times you know the same opinion or when we didn't and we get into fights about the movie it was like always still like you know funny yeah and, and learning things um but i think they, it creates this great shorthand that mm-hmm. we have now of like we don't really have to talk about it like we kind of mm-hmm. know what the other person is thinking a little bit or if we're watching something together when we're spotting an episode um and so that's the first time that i've worked with somebody that's been close you know yeah. and and that can really kind of go either way. You never know. Like when somebody's a super close friend. Um, and you work with them professionally, yeah. Yeah, and you work with them professionally. And so uh, and it, it just couldn't uh, uh, be better. Um, honestly, it's like been my favorite collaboration. Um, he's just such a great storyteller um, and um, is so smart. Um, and and uh, and it, it's just been really, um, yeah, it's been really great. And there's a lot of mutual trust too, mm-hmm. where I feel like, you know, he trusts me um, to uh, uh, to to kind of do the as long as it's like the version of the thing that he's wanting for the story, um, then then he leaves things to me. Um, mm-hmm. And it's only when the music starts doing a different thing than than he wanted to do uh, storytelling wise. That's the only time I you know that we sort of like get into you know I might get a note. Um, and again, oftentimes when I get that note it's like oh right he wants that oh okay mm-hmm. done and then and then it's done um and th- and i know why he's doing it too because i know he's got this sort of like you know Whatever. more master plan type mm-hmm. thing or, or grander plan i should say um and uh um uh, and, and it's that perfect i think it's a really great balance of, of trust and you know respect um going in both directions and um uh, and of course, he would if you were here. This would be the time where he would like tell a joke to or, like <laughs> <Yeah>. undercut. <laughs> I would expect so, knowing him. That <laughs> sounds sounds about right. Yeah. Um, uh, if if he's listening, because he, I know he might end up watching this. Uh, we hate you. It's fine. You're yeah. you'll, you'll downplay it. It's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, the uh, so what is it? Just to move beyond that part of it, was it like writing for? star trek specifically in terms of like making something that fits within a larger franchise um sound especially for lower decks which itself is very much evoking next gen um at least you know as as it was sort of finding its voice too as it's more to move beyond that too yeah uh no no absolutely um uh uh it's it's been first of all it's like a dream come true i i started watching star trek with my sister with next generation we started watching from the first episode um and you know i always i uh, have told this story a few times but it's basically sort of like you know my sister is seven years older than me and Mm -hmm. so you know there's a a nine-year-old and a 16 or 17 year old what can we agree to watch Right? Yeah. Like, what yeah. are we gonna? And, and it was also during the time where you know you didn't have a ton of options. We had ca- mm-hmm. you know, um, it was classic cable and stuff. You know, we had some some fun things to sort of flip through the channels. But still, there was always that. There's only one TV, and so who's gonna who's gonna win? Yeah. Um. And and Star Trek, we could we could both win. Um. And and then also like my first a little bit um, uh uh you know. Uh, a tiny bit crush on on Tasha Yar, and then uh, and then the crushing uh, um, character death, and that yeah. was like, I remember, that was a formative moment for me as a kid, and especially with stories too. It was like, oh, that can happen. It was my first mm-hmm. time. Like TV was so safe, yeah. you know. It was like like they never killed anybody off in TV, or if they did, it would be at the end of a season or it'd yeah. be a big deal, you know. And it so it was the, very Game of Thronesian before Games of it, Game it of Thrones. Kind of was, yeah. yeah, yeah. Kind of went hard, and and in some ways, it 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 was a it was a great way for the show to kind of move forward to give the show a sense of stakes going Mm -hmm. like because it felt like nobody was safe then yeah um and and that space was in fact dangerous yeah Yeah. (laughs) um not not just you know the 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 red shirts kind of you know um and uh uh, the main cast could could be um you might not see them next week um 
and and I, I think it just started my love of Star Trek and and then of course going back and you know watching the movies I think um Voyage Home was was out in theaters I think that was probably that might have been yeah. even the first um and that was just anytime it was on just you're watching that now um yeah. you know when it would play on on cable uh back in the days of linear television and um uh, sitting with your friends or whatever every time you, you know like because even as a teenager i remember watching uh voyage home just being like you know it was like we were oh starting to skateboard and thinking ourselves rebellious you know that kind of thing you know yep, we're like yep. we're rebels <laughs> like, i'm cool yeah i'm yeah. fighting the system man <laughs> yeah exactly and um you know i've got my beanie and uh, <laughs> and and so i um uh uh yeah. So, and yet the, that movie would come on and we would just be, you know, loving this movie about saving whales, yeah. you know, yeah. all completely like all those, you know, trying to be cool. That teenager stuff would just drop away. Hey, look, saving whales and fighting for the environment. That's cool too. Come on. <laughs> super cool. Super cool. And the, it's the coolest in fact. Yes. <laughs> um, and, uh, um, and it was, I mean, it, it was the thing where you could drop the, uh, um, you weren't afraid of being, called a nerd or something like that you know what i mean like it was like it was just it it was uh um sort of like a constant you know there's this this thing that can just disarm um uh uh, disarm people and you're you're pulled into this into this world and um yeah and 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 the films were just i would always you know love going to watch the movies um yeah so then and, what what drew you to like, did you notice the music at that time when you were watching it? Or is that something that came like later on? I not only did I, did I notice <laughs> the music it, from Voyager, yeah. I oh yeah. watched Voyager and and I couldn't watch the replays. In fact, I think it was on when did it air? Oh shoot, I can't remember what Voyager night. would have been like nineteen ninety three or four? But like the day of the week. Like so like oh, I think it was on yeah. like either maybe it was on like a Friday night or something. I can't remember. But whenever I would have to watch the first viewing because when they would repeat it later in the week, they would cut down the main title. And so oh. instead of playing the full Jerry Goldsmith theme, they would cut out the. the it would probably the just be the Star Trek Voyager like yep. logo. Yeah, they would do the cut down, and and uh, they would do a cut down version of the main theme, and it just was wrong. I yeah. couldn't. I yeah. literally couldn't watch the show unless it was the full main theme, and uh, yeah. yeah, and so that was the. Um, uh, so I actually probably skipped a fair number of Voyager episodes because they were like, you know, it was like yeah, I need the music. Yeah. 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 I was like, ah, oh, I can't start the show like this. This is I, so I always had, I think, reverence. This is before I was writing music, you know, yeah. having reference for that. Um, the feeling that it would give you, it was just that the, there was nothing else like it on TV. Um, yeah. And uh, it, it was just they felt more like movies. Um, yeah. I mean, like and, each one has their that's a great unique identity to like next gen yeah. having this like mystery into like the big bombast sort of thing with like deep space nine feels very like haunting in a weird way but like and and like lonely like the, with yeah, the trumpets. lonely contemplative yeah which makes and, sense for the character of the show it's out on the frontier basically yeah and then voyager having like the big like yeah let's go out and like do stuff like the very again like very very like celebratory feels like and like yeah we're exploring sort of vibe to it celebratory and then and also contemplative too mm-hmm. a little bit also yeah. more so than tng tng mm-hmm. i think is like you know more of a um what's like an anthem. yeah yeah oh yeah and yeah. That, yeah it starts with mystery and then it once it goes off into that um into the uh, uh the tpm theme mm-hmm. um uh uh sorry tmp um yeah, yeah i know what you meant i know what you meant yeah thank you um trekkies will eviscerate you in the comics yeah comics, yeah thank you comments, oh, it, it's like, as they should as they should <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no yeah no no i hear what you're saying yeah um uh, and then we yeah. get enterprise which is oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you know I, I it's funny enterprise i i did uh um i i was i missed a few of them and so now i want to go back that's the one i want to uh catch because mike has told me many many times that there's some like really good stuff in there. i mean so, i will extol the virtues of enterprise it is it is definitely a show that has many problems and it is evocative of a lot of the issues i have with star trek of that era i think exacerbated mm-hmm. the most um of it being like kind of like we're gonna do tng again and not like explore the cool ideas but that mm-hmm. being said when enterprise does actually utilize its concept of being a prequel to its fullest especially in like seasons three and four uh, and a little bit in seasons one and two here and there um then i think it's actually really really fascinating so i think there's a lot of good in there you just it's a little bit harder to find than the other shows so 
Yeah, I also love the the idea of of Star Trek pre Star mm-hmm. Trek. You know, when it's like they don't have all of the uh, uh, um, tools the, the, the for for TNG as much as I love it, they they always got out of the jam kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, that's that's the problem with Enterprise. I think is that like they start off quite often being like it's just Star Trek again. With like, for example, they don't have shields; they have like hull polarization, but it's still it functions the same way as a shield. Like it doesn't work any oh, differently. Just the shield, they just call yeah, it the same so they just say polarize the hull, and it's just this. You could just like shields up, and it's the same thing. But when they actually do like, there's a couple episodes where they like get damaged and then they can't go back to a star base because there's no star bases out there at that time. And they have to like deal with the damage for a few episodes. That's 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 interesting. interesting. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. Totally. It's uh, it's kind of like, I don't know if you're watching the show right now, but um, for all mankind. No, I was good. That is actually the I've actually made this comparison really a lot because. Sorry, this is me being the super trekking nerd, but Brandon Braga, who was the executive producer of Enterprise, his original pitch for Enterprise was that they didn't leave the planet Earth for the entire first season. It was all about just trying to get it off the ground, like get the ship off the ground, which is very similar to what For All Mankind is doing. So weirdly, Mm -hmm. I I have actually even made, I think I did it said in my video, like For All Mankind feels like a lot of what Star Trek Enterprise should have been especially yeah. in its early years. So sure. I, I do really like For All Mankind is like a weird Star Trek prequel in its own right too, so. Yeah, it's sort of like honorary Star Trek. It's becoming honorary Star Trek, I feel yeah, like. Yeah. The same way that yeah. Galaxy Quest kind of like eventually just became a Star Trek movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, well, not to distract, but just to pull it back yes. to, to, to you Please. specifically, like what is it yeah. like then writing for Lower Decks with like all that history of Star Trek music in your mind? Yeah, I mean, it, it was, uh, you know, scary at first again, you know, yeah. like uh, um, I had a lot of uh, uh, just enormous amount of respect for all the composers that, and they're all my idols, mm-hmm. you know, James Horner, Jerry Goldsmith, Alexander Courage, I, you mm-hmm. know, I, I heard so many stories about him um, and people called him Sandy, mm. um, what's his name, uh, uh, Sandy Courage. Oh, um, I did not know that's that. What, that's uh, the people that knew him called him, called him Sandy and, and he just seemed like such a character yeah. Um, and as well as an incredible composer. And um, and so, you know, yeah, I just felt this, you know, sense of uh, of lineage and, and just wanting to, um, uh, uh, I think, you know, be do my own thing, but then also be respectful, too, of like the, that you're working within this framework. I mean, Lower Decks is, is in some ways a, a much harder show to score than Solar Opposites because... Mm-hmm. For solar opposites, we just do whatever we want. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that do, next, but yeah, yeah, yeah I know yeah. It's, it's like you know, it's um, uh, uh, that's a that's a um, a one where it's sort of like we don't we're just making it up as we go along. Mm-hmm. And um, with Trek, there is a sense of like responsibility of, um, and we're also the show is meaning to um, uh, 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 to kind of feel like like certain um, certain parts of Star Trek that you know well, whether it's we're trying to feel like the movies in this one, or we're trying to feel like the you know like TNG in this and maybe a different section of the same episode. Yeah. And so it's um, uh, uh, handy to sort of just like, hey, know what that feel, should feel like. So I, I feel, you know, like lucky that, oh my gosh, like I'm lucky that I watched all that stuff growing up because yeah. I think I was just sort of like sort of slowly absorbing it throughout my life. Yeah. And, um, uh, but really it's just sort of like dream come true. Kind of like, you know, I think I, you know, I looked to you know yeah those episodes watching on tv and getting watching a theme watching a um uh uh, you know a ship fly by in space and and hearing a big bombastic orchestral theme yeah gosh you know how how lucky am i that i get to do that yeah um and uh um yeah and so it is very much like a dream come true it's still weird that i you know um and i I, it's feel very you know privileged to be in this sort of camp of star trek composers yeah Wild. you're doing um, you're doing great and I, I i told you this when i saw you but not, now i get to show you like technically it's a cut off because of the way the camera goes on but i still have always right up there uh i yes. have your, vi- your vinyl oh, hiding right up that's, there that's very sweet thank you actually ironically uh right next to a matrix poster so that fits the the constantine keanu reeves connection <laughs> yes don davis another one of my favorites yeah uh, yeah. yeah great composer and and uh i think he actually scored a couple episodes of track as well actually okay uh, i did not know that yeah. yeah he was doing i think he was doing um uh, a sequest he was a C- uh, composing for sequest but i think he did a couple episodes of either enterprise or maybe huh. um deep space nine i can't remember anyways okay. um that's great company thank you <laughs> yeah, yeah no I, I i i adore it so thank you thank you for all your phenomenal music because oh, it's wonderful so 
Um, okay. it's also great. Like, uh, I do board game nights here, so it's also good to float on my vinyl players. Like, let's listen to some uh, lower decks music as we play. It's perfect for that. <laughs> you know, did such a good job with the art. If I can yeah. just talk about oh yeah, please, please. Together. Like, yeah. they, I'm so pleased with the way that like it's you know both the color of the of the album. You know, I I don't that stuff all happens without me. Um, yeah. and so uh, uh, I was just like so delighted. Um, when I got one for the first time and opened it up, for, it's my first time I've had music and, and physical media. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, to use it sounds like dirty the way I say that. And it's like, oh, I didn't know, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is. It's so great to have something that you can like sort of touch. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's sort of uh, um, real and not just a stream or a mouse click. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, so, yeah, so thank you. Um, yeah, that's great that you have it because th- there's that means that there's like, uh, you know, chances we'll get to do more of those. Yeah, I want I want more of them. I Yeah, yeah. I uh, I have that one. And then I have uh, Star Trek Discovery season three one as well. So I'm trying to do my part. I'm trying to do my part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you're the only one I get displayed. The Discovery one's on the shelf, which I, I love their work as well. But you're the one that gets displayed. So <laughs> honored. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, just to jump over real quick before we, we wrap out, I did want to talk to you about Solar Opposites um, yeah. as well, because um, I do also really like that one, because that one also has like not that Lower Decks doesn't have a lot of playfulness to it, but uh, Solar Opposites, I feel like does have a lot of like fun playfulness, like the the opening score too feels very dramatic. Yeah. Uh, the like that whole bit and i'm cu- I'm curious yeah. like i'm curious how you get into like thinking about solar opposites uh as a composer um you know i think with solar it's it's great because it's so silly yeah you, you know you, you kind of want to make the music sort of as serious as you possibly can you know mm-hmm. to, to kind of counteract the the silliness so i i i think that like the, the main title for me is kind of like you know from corvo's mm-hmm perspective it's like everything has to be super yeah everything yeah. has to be yeah the, i think the music is much more what's happening and it's course sort of like almost like you know corvo's soundtrack kind of a thing yeah, yeah. um it's usually the music is doing what he's doing um gotcha. and uh yeah because if i were to do sort of like what uh what terry is like um <laughs> would be, be too jokey or um yeah. you know, the jokes are already funny so it's the same thing in in lower decks like the we talked a little bit about um you know both in both shows i think you know, what is the role of, of music? And I'm so lucky that I write music for two comedies right now and not have to write a note of comedy music. Yeah, uh, it, it isn't because it, it grounds both ground it. Right. It makes the yeah. for both shows makes the stakes feel real. Um, for Lower Decks, it makes it feel like in connection with the rest of the universe, despite it being uh, a cartoon. Um, yeah. Whereas Solar Opposites, it like makes the universe feel like grounded, despite all the wacky stuff that goes on. Yeah, it's it is. It's the straight man, you know. It's the yeah. sort of Wesley Nielsen or the the naked gun kind of. It's the person who's delivering the line. The line is ridiculous. The line is silly. The line will make you laugh. So you don't need to you don't need to say, oh, hey, this this line is funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, if anything, you deliver it with a straight face, musically speaking. You know, yeah. like uh, uh, yeah. And, and I think the um, the fun thing about that is again, it's like five shows in one. I was so say I was gonna ask, do you think about the wall storyline any differently musically than than oh, the rest totally. of it? Yeah, yeah. Totally. Wall is its own thing. Um and, and we really wanted to like, in fact, if, if people go back and watch the show, I contemplated doing sort of like a John Carpenter kind of like uh Oh fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, Escape from New York kind of version. Cause you know, it's like dystopian. Um mm. what we want it to sort of sound like, like. closed in wall. Yeah, very similar vibes. Yeah. And so, uh, cause I'd only seen up until that episode. And so the first time you go inside the wall, it's actually kind of like a little bit more 80s synthy. Mm. And, um, and then it's not until the few, and then when I saw the future episodes, I was like, Oh no, 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 that's not the right approach we need to do. And, and mm. Mike was telling me that the, you know, the seventh episode was coming and it was all going to take place inside the wall. Mm. And then, uh, it's like, Oh, this needs to be sort of like, you know, he was the one that was first to sort of say this needs to feel like more like Lord of the Rings. This has mm-hmm. to be like bigger and more epic and um and, and sort of more ar- archetypal, you know, they just yeah. have these really strong um uh uh, uh uh legends almost that we all kind of know, you know. And, yeah, and, yeah, like the, the the like foundations of the story rather than like the nitty gritty nuances sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it comes from the school of thought that's like there's only eight stories. Right? Yes, exactly. It's yeah, telling one of those eight. That's that's what the wall is, mm-hmm. and um and so mu- similarly musically, you know, you have to to sort of like um try and try and heighten um 
if you can, if it's even possible to heighten the the drama. Um, and uh, uh, that was really fun. And it actually, the the wall episode sort of served as almost like a little bit of like a testing ground for what the orchestra could do in that episode seven from that first season, because um, we were immediately going to go do lower decks. Mm-hmm. So it was like, is this going to is this going to work? kind of a thing and we we came out of that session that day just being like oh this is absolutely gonna you know gonna be great and it was great to sort of have that almost as like a warm-up in in preparation for for doing lower decks nice. um and uh and the music is very different you know the, mm-hmm. it's um a little bit more uh it's more i, I think russian sort of <laughs> you know in a, in a way there's something about like a cold hard winter that yeah. sort of like nothing like that, like, you know, makes you want to write a very serious sort of like, you know, um, it it has a little bit of, I think, uh, you know, sort of like more Masorikski, uh, Prokofiev, Shostakovich kind of vibe um, and um, stern, you know, and sort of like stern, stern music. And um, and then and then when we get to Lower Decks, it's it's completely different. So it's same orchestra, same players animation so it's the same sort of delivery essentially but um because it's star trek it's like it's much more sort of like nautical and yeah. and we talked about it because we're both you know like well no star wars fans you know and uh, uh but also love track you know yeah. and and i think but probably you know uh, uh where we are on that scale for me i'm like kind of like 50 50 and mm-hmm. Um, and well, so, Star Wars also has the archetypical feel too to it. To a it does it, but it approaches it from like a different way. And so mm-hmm. we were like, why is it that Star Wars feels different than Star Trek? Like, mm-hmm. why they're both set in space? People are always getting them confused. I get them confused. You know, like I say the wrong thing all the time. But why do they feel so different? And and I think the the big thing with the music is that it's it's um, like Star Wars music is aerial. I think and operatic. Mm-hmm. But Ariel, for me, became the touchstone because it's like, you know, even in that first movie, when they were cutting in all the effect shots, they were showing World War II footage, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's all like um, a, a sort of like World War II documentary wow. footage that he cut in as temporary effects because like, it's yeah. going to look like this. And it's like fast flying ships and things are moving. And so and the music is moving with all of that. And it's fast um, and flighty. And in the music of Star Trek is, I think, a little bit more aspirational. It's not quite, it's not so operatic. Mm-hmm. It's, um, uh, um, there's a little bit more of a core belief, I think, that the music is sort of getting towards within the quieter moments. And then in the battle moments, it's very much, I think, like Master and Commander, you know, mm-hmm. it's sort of not a whole... Star Trek movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, th- yeah, another honorific yeah, um yeah. star trek film yeah oh, yeah no one. i've always considered that just a weird like it's a star trek movie just set on uh in in water not space <laughs> it is it's it's so true it's so yeah. true and and so the the idea is that you have music that sort of feels like you know big crusting ships coming over a wave and then it crashes mm-hmm. down and then it's slow they have like there's these slow moving components to it where it's like yeah. oh we gotta come around and the ship isn't you know, <laughs> isn't turning so bad yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. it's like that and and what is it that you could do musically with that um as opposed to a you know do you do a banking turn with an x-wing and the trumpets go you know no 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 you know mm-hmm. or whatever and there's none of, we don't do that we don't sort of um it's sort of about these you're trying to complement and there's there's lots of um sort of fast and furious action that happens you know when the, in between orders being given um it's sort of like almost like football where they all like they're all preparing and there's a lot of downtime right there's like yeah. a lot of talking and uh and so you have to there's something that's really is a fun challenge with that um but but one of my favorite things is is getting to do the music for just i mean like a ship hanging in space, you know, and just cutting to it and like everything is all as well, you know, again, mm-hmm. there's sort of, I still want to feel when I'm writing something, I still want to feel like this ebb and flow of the, you know, you're almost like in a, on a small ship at the dock kind of a thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. I just, I, I, I can, I can hear your piece so clearly. It's like the like that, that, like that, like piece of mystery and then bringing in the horns, which is, is I, I can hear that so clearly in my head. Yeah, there's always like this, you know what it is? It's like there's a static component, right? There's mm-hmm. something that stretches beyond that's sort of like this uh, landscape. Mm-hmm. And then you've got these mom- the musical moments sort of happen on top of that. And I always think it whether it's oh, the ocean or space, the infiniteness of yeah. space, stillness, yeah. 
there's always like an element of stillness and then an element of activity and then a long maybe theme or melody being played on top of that. And there's, mm -hmm. there's something about those ingredients that just um, uh, is uh, uh, something that I just love being able to contribute to. And I, yeah. I don't know, it's, the, it's the best. I, I love being able to, to write also like, you know, can I just say like, it's, um, the getting to write a piece of music that's just pretty you know yeah like, yeah, yeah. There, you don't get asked that a lot as a composer anymore <laughs> like so it has I, to be very functional yeah yeah it's like functional or, or like edgy or like um you know propulsive or mm -hmm. um you know uh, um those are the kind of a lot of the uh, well what's right for a lot of the stories being told mm -hmm. and so i'm so like uh I, I think uh uh lucky and, and and appreciative that i get to like you know write a warm hug at the end of the episode you know yeah. like uh there's so many you know where the storylines are sort of like wrapping up and you know they're there you hear you know them you know bickering as the ship is like about to go <laughs> working away yeah. and and um and it's and, and being able to like write a piece of music that feels like a hug you know like oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's the best um wow. uh, so you... yeah Oh, I was just going to compliment you like it it you feel that in the show as you watch it like it is just like at the end of every episode it just feels like this nice like like nice like moment of like oh yeah it feels final but feels sweet and feels and, and feels like yeah we're ready to go off into the next thing it 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 really does and then get hit with a bump 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 like right at the yeah, end and like, then it, yeah and then we go in, yeah exactly yeah, it's it's a it's, it's a, a really it leaves you feeling very good and I think you 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 do a wonderful job with that Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, you know, some of that was pandemic, I think, honestly. Yeah, like needing the warm like, hug. <laughs> yeah, like I honestly, like for all, all of us, you know, I was like living, you know, uh, 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 alone here. And and so it was, uh, it was uh, I was so glad, by the way, I'm so glad that I get to work on Lower Decks and, yeah. and during the pandemic. If I had to do some like, you know, movie with like, you know, a torture scene or something like that in it, yeah, so um, I, I, I would just be, you know, uh, um, taking a lot, even more walks than I did. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, so there was something very, and I think it gets back to that fundamental. I talked about this with, with people at Star Trek Chicago. Yeah. Um, this was why it was, it was so great to, um, to get to go and see, see the fans and see how people were interacting with the show and, and what it meant for them. And there were a lot of people that I talked to that it was, you know, yeah, it was a reason to kind of, you know, during the pandemic, it was a reason to get excited about the day. Yeah. Um, you know, when a new episode would sort of drop and I'm, I'm just like, well, for me, getting to write the music was the thing that I, I get to spend time in this a um, uh, 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 place that was sort of like aspirational and um, uh, uh, uh yeah, and just hopeful and something that like was moved beyond where we're at too. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, that was a that was yeah, that's a, another big thing about Star Trek where it's it's um you know, between the two, where would you rather live? I mean, yeah, sure it'd be <laughs> cool to watch a Jedi just be a badass, but I'd kind of rather live in Star Trek. Yeah, it's like would you rather live in the endless cycles of uh fascism yeah, uh, know, or, right? or like the 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 uh, what was it, the uh social socialist utopia? Uh <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. Of yeah. like, uh, um, and 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 I think it's that aspirational nature that that sort of just keeps people sort of coming back, myself included. Oh, yeah. Um, and, well, you uh, bring you bring in new people with your work, and are probably inspiring. In fact, I'm certain uh, inspiring more people. Um, I hope you know that, like the people that you getting inspired by stuff like Voyager and stuff is what you're doing now for, I'm sure many people out there going and like, I love this music. So. Yeah. I can't even, uh, I can't even think about that, but yeah, yeah. But thank you. Yeah. Well, you are wonderful. Amazing. And I, I do have to start wrapping yes. out here. Cause I actually yes. have somewhere to be afterwards, Thanks. but, um, but I do want to just like wrap out by saying you are wonderful and amazing. I adore your work. Um, you. You and, uh, I'm saying this for not just myself, but I know a bunch of people who are, are, want to say this to you as well. So you deserve all the success and I'm excited to see what you're going to do on the next season, of lower decks and all the other projects you do in next season of solar opposites and, and everything else. So, um, to, to toss it back to you, uh, where, what, what do you want people to, to do in order to support you for whatever you have coming next? Oh, um, you know, I would love for them to, first of all, like and subscribe on your channel. Cause like, this is, uh, uh, no, it's just, like, 
Yeah, that's the first thing. So if you haven't done that yet, just go ahead and do that now. Well, thank uh, you. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, because uh, um, yeah, no, seriously, we we uh, the first season, and again, being in pandemic was was rough, and, we, and we, all of us would talk about this that we felt like that it was like oh, I, but there's somebody who gets it, you know, and thank you. that's how we knew that we were doing okay. Um, in, in, in some of those, you know, it's hard to put a show out and mm-hmm. you know, people, it takes a while for them to get to know, uh, um, what, what the vibe the is. is in here. Yeah, so, I, yeah. I, and I think that the, the biggest thing you can do is just tell your friends, um, to, to start watching the show and, this, um, and just sign up for a free month. If you can get a Paramount Plus or sign up for a month and just, you know, binge all, all 40 episodes that we've mm-hmm. got, uh, up there so that, you know, hopefully we can continue doing, uh, more of this. Yeah. Well, I I adore you. I adore Lower Decks. Like I, I don't just say that because you're on here. Like Lower Decks is my favorite show on right now, and it makes me feel oh, so happy. You. So just thank you for for being such an important part of it and all the work that you do. So you're so welcome. I love so. Yes. Yay. <laughs> yeah, I've never done this. Hang on. There we yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, I, I I learned how to do it because it's like you got to angle it towards the camera, so it feels yes, a little towards weird. the camera. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it's like you like, look at my knuckles. Doing? It's weird. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But yes, sending you love. And again, thank you for doing this. And everyone go go watch Lower Decks and uh, Solar Opposites as well. All right. Great. Right.